Thank you. Uh, meeting of the Board of Selectmen for February 12th to order. Please rise for the pledge. I pledge allegiance to, to the flag of the United, United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, <coughs> one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. We have minutes from. Um, Bob's giving you water over there. Uh, last for your meeting. Do you want to do them individually, or everybody happy with doing them all as one? Let's do them all together. Uh, I move approval of the minutes of January 18th, 22nd, 25th, and 30th of 2018. Second. Second. Any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. For selecting his comments. Um, the only thing I have to comment on is that we had a great turnout for the Olympic gathering downtown on uh, Saturday. I think we probably had 500 people there. And uh, it was, everybody had a great time. Uh, there's so much excitement in town right now about, about what's going on this week. It's really, it's really great. So joining the fun. Chuck Golds this weekend for the U.S. I saw, so good stuff. Yep, yep. Yeah, I think things start on Thursday for us. Actually, Thursday morning. Very cool. Uh, citizens' comments. Do I need a microphone? Yes. Uh, where do we have it? Do we have it? Just so speak very loud. Okay. <coughs> you didn't bring your own? No. Well, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll just make this fast. I just wanted to um, recap what, what happened. Make sure you say your name for the camera. Oh, Lynn Charles, uh, 5 Nichols Hill Drive, Madison. And I just wanted to recap what happened at that meeting. It seemed like a, a gazillion years ago. Um, but we did have um, our state rep, our state senator, Noreen Kukaruda, and Ted Kennedy Jr., and um, also Joe McDougall, a former first, our former selectman here. And um, the consensus was that this was a, a passing a fracked lifespan for Madison would be a good idea, and that there are essentially no downsides. And the consensus, Kennedy said, was at the state level, such a bill would probably take longer than expected and not be as rigorous. Um, and also, um, at the same time at this last meeting, uh, the Board of Selectmen, you all, um, issued a fast-moving timeline for the Academy School. And Joe McDougall made the very important point that to, it would be very important to have this fracked waistband in place before we move ahead um, on the academy project because we obviously don't want fracked waste used as fill. Um, and I just want to urge the selectmen, again, that the um, ordinance, the draft ordinance that we presented has been well researched, documented, and used in 33 or of the 34 towns in Connecticut. Um, and that it was prepared by the legal counsel of Riverkeeper, which is um, the cousin of Ted Kennedy Jr., uh, Robert Kennedy Jr.'s organization. Um, so, bottom line, um, I think if there is, I do believe that you, know, you should review it carefully, the draft ordinance, but I think, um, you know, any uh, changes would be minor. Just, you know, some few, you know, tweaks here and there, if, if at all. And um, this should be done efficiently without carrying it out. And I did notice that number 17 on the agenda today is a fracked waistband. So I thank you. And I look forward to hearing the timeline. Here's the microphone. It's uh, Jennifer Lee, 17 Bradley Road. And I'm just here to second what Lynn said. Um, I do want to give you a nod and a bravo for bringing the community together as well for the Olympians. Um, but I'm here primarily to support the fracking dam based. That's, that's it. Thank you. Any other citizen comments? Hearing none. Old business number five, update from Department Head Senior Services Director. Good morning, Austin. Do I need the mic? Yeah, yeah, just for the public. Yeah, that's probably a good idea. Thank you. I'll try to keep this short. Um, Austin Hall, Director of Senior Services. Um, so came to deliver a little short, 
quick report on what was going on at the senior center in the last few months. Um, two little statistical um, interesting stats. Uh, so last year we were up 29% in membership and 14% in program participation. So those are two pretty good numbers for us to, uh, to lean on from last year. Um, at the commission level, uh, the Senior Commission has uh, updated their bylaws, which you all approved or looked at um, a few months ago. Um, some additions and changes to the bylaws were uh, what the expectation of commission members are, uh, important dates like report uh, when we have to do our yearly report to you all, um, roles of the chair, vice chair, secretary, just to button up and tighten up what the um, what the commission members should be doing and and. Uh, to give folks who may be coming on as a commission, a commission member, you know, idea of what the the job entails. Uh, one of our former commission members is is working on starting a Friends of Madison Seniors. Um, <clears throat> so you know, a lot of folks don't uh, or don't want to donate money to a um, a town organization, but they will donate to a a nonprofit or um, a group like that. So. Um, Craig Bernard is, is working on starting a group that will um, you know, actively fundraise for things that um, we don't come to the town for, like uh, picnic tables outside in our veranda, things like that. Uh, so that will be coming up shortly. Um, so we did on, on January 1st, we started the new membership uh, initiative. So the numbers so far, uh, this was as of uh, Thursday. We have 118 non-Madison members, so folks from different towns, uh, 261 Madison members, and 278 folks received the fee waiver. So those are folks who uh, get state tax relief, um, energy assistance, uh, and, and items like that. So a total of 657 folks since January 1st. Uh, not too bad. Um, you know, we didn't. I kind of expected to get some uh, you know, negative reactions to that, um, but we, we really haven't. Not for Madison residents, anyway. Um, you know, they understand why we're doing it and the benefits of it. Um, some of the, the non-residents have given us uh, some issues, but you know, we're working working our way through those. Don't let them in. <laughs> <laughs> um, working on getting a new uh, pretty and bus driver. Uh, so when folks take vacation, it won't impact the services we provide. Uh, we just got our new buses on the road that we got from the DOT. Um, it's really nice, rides nice, smooth. Uh, it's got some nice, like a backup camera, you know, 21st century kind of stuff. Um, so we'll be going to bid, went to bid uh, a couple months ago on the bus that's in the CIP. Um, and ran into a few snags with that. The um, one of the companies who we we've, we've purchased buses from in the past sort of wrote up the spec sheet for us and it made it difficult for us to get um, real bids um, based on that spec sheet. Um, so we'll go out and do it again in the next couple of weeks and get that on the road. So that would give us two brand new buses, two 08s and 09s, um, and then we have van 62, which is a, like a minivan. <coughs> Austin, are you just retiring the old ones back here? So is it? So we'll keep them as backups. So when the other buses need to go in for service, uh, we won't, you know, service our service won't be affected. We'll be able to just jump in those and keep them going. Um, the two buses just went through. The two older ones just went through and were, um, you know, new tires, new brakes, got state certified. The wheelchair lifts um, were certified, so they're they're, they're pretty good. Uh, it's just they have a ton of miles on them. Um, I guess the 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 working years are like five or a hundred thousand, and we're well beyond, well beyond all that for those. So it's important. The new ones ride so much better. It's tough when you sit in the back of those buses and you're going over, you know, potholes on the highway and roads. You know, it's it gets pretty brutal. Not, not, not our town. When we go up, yeah. wait for face over here. <laughs> These my guys. We wouldn't say that. Um, <clears throat> so and what we're currently doing now is we're in tax relief season. So. Uh, that's that's what my department is focusing on over the next four or five months is getting people in, um, applying for the various 
tax relief um, opportunities, so town tax relief, state tax relief, um, the tax freeze, tax deferral, and the veterans tax relief. Um, so we take appointments now through May 15th. Um, we also offer on Tuesdays, AARP um, comes in and offers tax prep for free. So if you have a basic tax return, um, you're able to come to the senior center, you make an appointment with us and um, they'll do your tax return for free. They file it and do everything. Um, so we do 27 appointments every Tuesday. And uh, if it's anything like the years prior, every appointment gets taken. And we try to add a couple here and there too, but it's, it gets sold out um, every time. So it saves folks a couple hundred bucks instead of going to H&R Block with a simple tax return or you know, not being able to do it yourself with some kind of tax software. Um, it's important that, that we offer that. And then, so if they're Madison residents, they go up there, get their taxes done, come right down, and we could apply for a lease so they do it all in one trip. They don't have to. <coughs> I fought through software this weekend. Is there any available spots for selection too? <laughs> we'll get you, we'll get you in, we'll get you in. Um, so, and then, to wrap up the, the tax uh, relief numbers from last year, so the 2017 numbers, uh, we had 372 um, seniors in town relief, received town tax relief, uh, 190 received the state tax relief, and 347 um, were enrolled into the freeze program, and 25 in the deferral program. How many in the freeze did you say? 347. So that's, that's a lot of folks, um, a lot of applications, a lot of time, a lot of face time with seniors, which is great. That's why I think it's great that we, some towns don't have their senior services department do these um, applications, but I think it's important that, that we do um, to get face time with these seniors and um, you know, let them know that we're there and we can help them, you know, not only for this, but you know, when we sit down for these appointments, it's not just about tax relief, it's about whatever they want to talk about and issues they're having and how we can you know, help them guide them through those things. So uh, it's a good thing. I think we should just note that <coughs> the administration of the senior tax freeze this year was very difficult. Um, it took a long time. Um, we just got letters out like a couple weeks ago. Um, software related or process related? Software related, primarily, yeah. Uh, but also process related, I mean it was both. So we, we learned a lot of things in the process that we need to change in the, in the ordinance. Um, and we want to kind of combine all the ordinances because we've got three different ordinances now that, that we try to work on and it's, it's tough for the assessor to, to get all this done at the same time. So if we can streamline it into one ordinance that contains all the provisions of all three um, and we'll be working on that over the next couple of months. But you guys did a great job and the assessor's office also did it and it just, just took a long time. Um, well, I had one other question for you. Membership is it family or individual? Individual. Okay. Yeah. So I and I have to each check it. Fork over <laughs> 15 bucks each. Yeah. Okay. okay. I wonder where you were going with that. So each one. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, is there a senior discount? <laughs> Any questions or? Uh, just a, a quick one. <clears throat> you had some hopes for the um, the revenues generated by the fees. Um, are, are those living up to your expectations? Uh, we'll get there. Yeah, there's you know there's folks that go away for the winter that aren't aren't here right now. Um, so I did the math. I, I can't recall what it was, but I think we're up to um, like sixty five hundred dollars, I believe. Um, so eighty percent of that goes to the will go back into the Marcus account um, to fund Meals on Wheels and energy assistance. Then twenty percent will stay with the department to do functions and things for the for the members. So. And, and that's really why I brought it up, is to remind everybody that the reason we're doing this is to create continuing funds for Meals on Wheels primarily. Yep. Austin, what can you tell us about the quantity and quality of the programs that are being offered by the Senior Center? They're great, and we get we get told that a lot. Um, somebody was at a, one of the, we have men's poker on Tuesdays, and one of the guys was at a New Haven Chamber of Commerce meeting probably like three weeks ago, and he came in um, on a, a date that he wasn't supposed to come to the senior center and said that there was talk at the New Haven Chamber that, um, you know, Madison has you know, the best senior services department on the shoreline. I don't know who said it. Um, I don't know if Eileen was there maybe. <laughs> um, but, you know, things like that where, um, you know, we think we have great programming. The seniors who come 
probably believe we have a great program, but to hear it from somebody who, you know, never comes to the senior center except on Tuesdays to play poker with five other guys, I mean, that, that, that sort of speaks volumes to, you know, how, how far our, our reach is. Yeah. That's high stakes. Super high stakes. <laughs> How's the lunch program doing? Yeah. Lunch program's doing great. Um, so we have, you know, consistently 60 people every Friday. Um, so, and then we bumped up the max number on during the week to 50. Um, and we're reaching that number two or three times a week. Um, and you have waiting list sometimes, right? Yeah, so we have waiting lists every Friday up to like 30 people on a waiting list. But by the time people cancel or change their plans, we're able to mostly um, satisfy the waiting list. Um, so how, what we do is if, if we get 30 people on a waiting list and as folks start to cancel, regardless of whether you're first or 30th on the waiting list, if you're a Madison resident, that's how we go first. So first, you know, people who are Madison residents get first, first options to, to take the spots. And then once those are satisfied, we'll move on to the, the non-residents. Is it still fish Friday? Some type of seafood every Friday. Every Friday. Is that why the Friday is so I don't know. Better? Yeah, um, I think so. probably. We've put fish on other days and it sells out too. Um, yeah, people enjoy it. It's stuff you don't want to, some people don't want to cook right. you know, seafood in their home or you know, it's not, maybe not as easy to cook seafood as it is a sandwich. So, yeah. What, uh, what are you planning for future programming? Uh, so we're doing some, some programming with, with Trenton, the health department. Um, so doing some interdepartmental cooperation kind of things. Um, we have something going on with, with youth and family right now with um, doing things at the high school, um, so intergenerational opportunities. Um, we offered a new program, uh, sort of like a mix on Tai Chi and it's called 18 Movements and that really um, I think it was 24 people enrolled in that. Um, so sort of like the different yeah. stuff. So you know, every senior center offers, you know, trips to the casino, uh, blood pressure screens, and things like that. So it's the the non-normal kind of stuff that really sort of piques folks' interest, and we try to you know grab a few of those here and there to you know satisfy that the different kind of things that, that folks want to do that you can't get get other places for the prices that we can offer them at. So Austin, the senior center is, is well used <coughs> five days a week. How about evenings, weekends? Yeah, so during the day it's senior programming. On um, nights we rent to, um, you know, all the sports groups in town rent the building for meetings. Uh, we have AA um, Monday, Wednesday, Saturday, Sunday. Um, Wednesdays, there's two AA meetings there. Uh, we rented to Rotary Club. Uh, we have a business networking group that meets in the morning for breakfast. Um, you know, all the town, different organizations, volunteer organizations in town, um, all meet there. So it's a great meeting spot. We have, you know, a lot of breakout rooms where you can meet with small groups, large groups. Um, you know, right now, Little League and youth football um, are meeting a couple times a week there. And then on weekends we have meetings and um, birthdays that we rent the cafe out for. We have a birthday this coming Sunday. Um, those are the, the, the birthday rentals and the private things are where we generate income for our, our rental um, line item. Um, so we don't do a ton of those, but we do enough to make it, make it worthwhile. So in a sense, um, daytime use is senior center use and other than daytime use, it's more of a community center. Uh, I don't know if I, I would say that, but it's we use it to rent. You know, we, we generate revenue through through rentals. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, I don't want I don't want to call it a community center, but um, after the seniors are done with it at four o'clock, we do open up at night a few days a week to to groups in town. Yeah. If the public is interested in renting, uh, who do they contact? I uh, can call our office um, at the Senior Center, 245-5627, and anybody who answers the phone can help them do that. Thank you. Thanks, Austin. Okay, new business number six. Discussing takes action on a proclamation of the Green Up Cleanup Day.
<coughs> proclamation reads, whereas in 1984 the town of Madison held its first annual cleanup, cleanup day to coincide with Earth Day, and whereas through the outstanding efforts of the town landscape committee and numerous other volunteers, this program has continued to grow over the last several years, and whereas Madison has been in the forefront of a shoreline effort to combat, combat litter, and whereas through the hard work of town residents, Madison has been given an annual spring cleaning, which is appreciated throughout the whole year. Now, therefore, we, the Board of Selectmen of the Town of Madison, do hereby proclaim April 21st, 2018, as Green Up Cleanup Day, and urge all residents to participate in this worthwhile project. I'll second that motion. All in favor? Aye. 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 I just want to add really quickly that having done this for several years, for the people who want to get out and do it, if you get this, the CVS Cumberland Farms area, you're guaranteed to get 25, 30 cents easy um, and loose change on the ground. <laughs> <laughs> not too much you can't. Yeah. Not that you're counting. <laughs> okay, number seven, discuss and take action on proclaiming Sunday, February 25th, 2018, Madison <coughs> Olympians Day in honor of Olympic skiers Mac Bohannon and Kylie McKinnon and figure skater Zachary Donahue. Whereas Mac Bohan, Zach, Zachary Donahue, and Kylie McKinnon are all natives of Madison, Connecticut, competing in the 2018 Winter Olympics in Pyeongchang, South Korea, which commenced on Friday, February 9, 2018, and concluded on Sunday, February 25, 2018. And whereas Mac Bohan is representing the United States of America in the 2018 Winter Olympics as a member of the U.S. ski team, and whereas Zachary Donahue is representing the United States of America in the 2018 Winter Olympics as a member of the U.S. figure skating team, and whereas Kylie McKinnon is representing the United States of America in the 2018 Winter Olympics as a member of the U.S. ski team, and whereas Mac Bohan and Zachary Donahue and Kylie McKinnon have all shown dedication and skill in their sport, and whereas such representation confers great honor to the United States and to the town of Madison, now therefore we, the Board of Selectmen, on behalf of the town, do declare that Sunday, February 25th, 2018, is declared as Madison Olympians Day in the town of Madison. I'll second that. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 That way. Number eight, discuss and take action to call a budget public hearing on Monday, March 5th, 2018, at 7 p.m. in the auditorium of the Walter C. Paulson Middle School for the purpose of a budget presentation by the Board of Selectmen and the Board of Education, conducted by the Board of Finance in accordance with the Town Charter 10.5.8. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, number nine, discuss and take action to award the bid for the Brown Middle School Electrical Upgrades Project. So moved. Pretty good. Okay. I'm second. Second. Everybody get a chance to look at this? No. So I'm seeing so, it just now. Um, this is a project. Is somebody here to talk about it or you want me? Okay, John. He asked me to fill in. Billy asked me to fill in for so it's from what Billy explained to me, um, they're upgrading the electrical switch gear for Brown Middle School, which I guess is old and, and needs to be updated. And went out to bid, um, I guess there were, there were seven bidders that responded and they put a bid in. And uh, the recommendation tonight is, or t this morning, is to put in, uh, to, to recommend the low bidder um, consolidated electric to perform the work, and I, I guess that uh, facilities have some experience with that company, a past experience, and they're satisfied with their work. Um, I guess also there's, um, it's time, time sensitive in that um, they have the summer to get this um, project completed, and it'll take uh, a few uh, weeks to get the work done. Okay. So th this is also um, part of the CIP plan. It has been part of the CIP plan. So this is, th this is yeah, this is not a new project. We're just executing on something that we've already approved um, previously. And the pricing came in. <coughs> the difference in, from high to low was significant. Yeah. Like over 100,000. What, what did he estimate, do you recall? What was in CIP? Was that higher number? number? Higher number. 282. 282? What's the total of this? Just so I can... 147. <coughs> John, is this replacing the original equipment? Yes. From the uh, I, said, I don't know. Is, is, it, is, it, is it? Yeah. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. There was apparently, um, we were told a couple of years ago that there's a 
something wrong with that equipment that should be replaced, then we would never get into it. You said have a long, useful life, huh? Yeah. 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 Okay, I'm going to table number 10. Do we have to put a button? Did we button out? You did not go on number 10. Oh, sorry, okay. We have a um, motion and a second. We have a motion and a second? Yeah. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, table number 10, I make a motion to table number 10. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. <laughs> Number 11, discuss and take action to authorize the first selectman to sign an environmental review record pertaining to the concrete meadows condominiums. So moved. Second. Any discussion? Well, this is maybe just really kind of a housekeeping issue for this project, right? So yeah, this is what all it is. part of the CDBG grant application that we're putting through for Concord, Med for Concord Meadow. So the town itself has to apply for the grant, although all of the grant proceeds in the entire project is for Concord Meadows, but the grant is awarded to the town. And as part of that, we have to let whoever we um, go with as the consultant for that item number 10 that we just tabled is going to have to complete this environmental report and then Tom will have to sign it. So this is just a matter of we want to just get it approved now so that when we, as soon as we get the report, Tom can sign it and we'll be in compliance with that step of the grant project. Okay, that's helpful. Well, Lauren, mm -hmm. I, I certainly understand your explanation yeah. and I have no problem with the first selectman signing it, but I, I have a feeling I should look at it before, before I authorize any signature on it. I can get you a copy of last year's, it's about 950 pages. So oh goodness. You have Oh boy. Yeah, I can get you a copy of last year. Um, again, it's specific to Concord Meadows. It's not an environmental report that the town is going to do. It's an environmental report that the consultant is going to have completed on behalf of the Concord Meadows project. Um, and last year it was completed by the same um, company that they were using for their architectural services for the project itself. So essentially what the report says is it says whether or not the property is in a flood zone, whether or not the work that they're proposing is going to have any kind of environmental impact um, on the town itself. But the work that they're proposing to do is all ADA requirement updates. So it's changes to the bathrooms and it's installation of new windows. So they're not actually doing anything to the land itself. They're doing stuff to the building. But it might understand, so this, this action that we're talking about here is more of a, just a formality so that this we can apply is, for the grant. This report is, is required by HUD in order for us to apply for the grant. It's one of the many uh, hurdles that they put into this grant application to make sure that you're serious about applying for it. Yeah. Um. And we also, yeah. just so you know, you approved last year, Tom, doing the same thing. Yeah. I. I had a feeling we had a chance to look at it last year. You may have. Yeah. Um, I didn't receive it until the day Tom signed it, so you definitely approved him signing it before seeing it last year. Um, do I understand you correctly that, that this environmental review record is already a created document? Yes. Okay. Yeah. I, I guess, Lauren, uh, maybe just for future reference, I, I don't speak for all of us, but I'd love to see these things before the meeting so that I feel comfortable voting. Um, yeah, I wonder if there maybe there's just a process we can put in place, I and mean, we've sort of notioned this behind the scenes a little bit. But but uh, you know, maybe there's a discuss, and then then the next meeting is a discuss and take action, so that we can review the document, discuss the document, and then the next meeting. I think the board of ed actually does that. The document too, right? doesn't exist yet, right? So it exists in last year's form. Yeah, it needs I mean. to be reviewed again, and it needs to be certified by whoever the consultant is going to use to complete the report. With the way that the CDBG grant process works, it is incredibly time sensitive and it's an incredibly difficult grant process. Um, there isn't a lot of time for me to show you things before they need to be voted on because that's how this grant is set up. It is incredibly convoluted and it's, last year we ended up not being able to apply for the grant because there were so many things oh that God. we were not expecting to be as part of this wow. grant process. Um, so Sounds in like a we, need that, world, we need that grant writer. And, and then this no, this, this is, but this is this is a nuanced thing because it's really Concord Meadows doing it, but, exactly. they, but they don't have, but they don't have the, the recognized authority, authority to, to do it, exactly. so we have to do so it on their have, behalf. Exactly. Everything that we're doing for this ramp is on behalf of Concord Meadows. Technically, like they're doing 90% of the due diligence, they're doing 90% of the work, 
but they cannot apply for the grant and they cannot receive the grant funds. The town has to be this intermediary for them. Right. Mm -hmm. right. So yes. that's why Tom has to sign certain things. I'm actually compiling all the town's um, documents as part of this grant, and then the town actually has to be the one to submit the grant. Um, and I applaud you for all those efforts. And I, I guess I'm trying to make a very narrow point. Um, um, if the document was available, you know, last week, I guess I would have liked to have received it. And it, 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 I'm going to tell you something. For this grant, because we're going to go through this every year now, because we're going to need to reapply for this grant over the next two years for this property, it will never be available in the version for Tom to sign before you go on well, allowing him to sign it. Just putting that out there with the way that the time frame works, um, you're, you know, I can point you to the copy of last year's because I do still have that binder from yeah, last year in my office, might... but it's not something that I can like let you have and it's not something I can scan and send to you because it's, you know, a Is five inch a... thick three ring binder full of paper. Is there like an executive summary at the front or I something I can see that... if there's an executive summary and send you like the, your easiest. prior executive summary just to refresh your memory on what it is. Tom, is it is it fair to say that that our decision as a board, our action as a board, is to either decide to participate in this process with Concord Meadows or not, and that once we've agreed to participate, everything else that follows is is really just the mechanics of getting yes, a grant. Exactly, and you've already agreed to to go ahead with this grant, so you have a, a board yeah, I mean, agreed to, to, do all this. to apply for the grant. You don't have a choice. Yeah, exactly. We don't, if we want to apply for the grant, we don't have a choice. We have to allow time. And the to reason we're applying for the grant is because Concord Meadows, uh, the first phase of Concord Meadows that was built, was built extremely uh, energy inefficiently. Mm -hmm. And so, this the whole point of these uh, improvements is to uh, these people are limited, you know, uh, limited income people. <coughs> they do pay for their utilities though. So this would help them, you know, have uh, lower utility bills because I think if it's electric heat now, it would be gas and uh, thermal windows and you know, I mean, just insulation and all those kind of improvements that need to be done. What's the size of the grant? Dollars what? Eight hundred and sixty-five thousand. <coughs> yeah. Something like that. Considerable. Yeah. It, it's a, it is a considerable. And this, grant. that's only phase one. I mean, this is yeah. going to take three. It's an ongoing right? process. So this is phase one: is to complete all of the window replacements and to start the ADA bathroom upgrades to the units that need it the most. Phase two will be to continue those ADA upgrades to the bathrooms, and then phase three is to do another form of ADA upgrades in another part of the building. So. We have to apply for the grant every year and hope that we get it every year because we can only use the funds for what we say we are using them for. Um, so next year if we get the grant for the ADA bathroom upgrades and we decide that, oh, we also need to replace doors, we can't do that with those funds. We can only do what's on the grant application. And they're only going to approve so much money at a time. So this will be phased in, and every year we're going to have to go through this. It's a very, very intense grant application process, and every year we're going to have to do this for that. Um, my sense is we're all in agreement about the policy of applying for the grant. I, I think Bruce just gave me an idea, and maybe when we, as a board, vote to uh, uh, go after a grant, maybe that motion should contain all of these subsequent uh, steps so that it doesn't keep coming back for each of the steps that you need to apply for the grant. Just release I like Bruce's want. idea. We, we agreed we wanted to go after the grant, and I think in maybe for clever. In this instance, I can't do that because the state requires a copy of the certified minutes that approved Tom signing that report. So, great idea. Sounds like everything is, <laughs> everything is custom. <laughs> and normally that is, that is how, how, we, how we word a motion to approve a grant, is to okay. approve Tom signing the grant application and any yeah. subsequent forms. But in this All instance, I actually have to submit a version of these certified I surrender. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Tom, would you sign this thing, please? Yeah. <laughs> so you have a motion and a second. You just need to vote. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 12, discuss and take action to award the bid for the construction of fire protection water storage tank project. So? Um, before we go any further, could you explain the difference between 12 and 13? Rob's going <laughs> Okay, so we Excellent. have a motion. Second. Thank you. 
Right. Sure. So, um, Department of Public Works and Engineering, in conjunction with the North Madison Volunteer Fire Department, um, bid out the recently bid out um, the Genesee Lane Fire Underground Fire Protection Water Storage Tank. So, the first we bid it out in two separate phases: the construction and the installation of the tank, and also the provision of the tank. So, this first item, item number twelve, is for the installation of the tank. So we received our bids this past Friday and we received one bid. Um, the pre at the pre-bid we had three uh, potential bidders. Um, two of them, um, for reasons unknown, had not decided not to uh, submit a bid. And the, the bid, the town uh, Department of Public Works is recommending that Schumach Engineer Construction um, receive the uh, construction portion of the project for in the amount of $74,884. Do we have any guidelines if only one bid comes in? Is there issues with that? Are we okay? Sounds like there was a pre-bid process. But uh, how does it compare to the last one we did? Uh, the last one, I, I believe we had three bidders. Right. But this was, we followed the town's procurement yep. procedures. Right. We advertised mm -hmm. in the source. We I called. What I mean is what was the last, what was the price on the last one? Oh, the, the winning bid? Yeah. Uh, the winning bid for the last one was $64,000, but that was four years ago. Yeah, right, so 74 was the last one. It's in the, it's in the ballpark. Yeah, absolutely. When CIP uh, calculates uh, the future cost of these things, what, what are we currently well, estimating? 125? They may have to go up here. 110? 110. Yeah. So 74 These costs have been in there for a while. Right. Right. We're going to have to update it going forward. So it's a total cost for that item. That's that's yeah. just the that's just the installation of the tank. The next item is for the provision of the tank. Are we going to be within budget of both items? <coughs> no. Stacy, no. uh, no. do you want to yeah, speak about well, the financials? Do you want to talk about the next piece? I'd rather sure. talk about yeah, the totality versus. Okay, so I guess so I can okay, understand. So I will go, I'll go to the speak about the provision mm -hmm. of the tank, and then we'll if you want to speak about the, the total yeah. sum. Yeah. Do you, so that's item thirteen. Can I can you put that by him just a. Yeah, okay, yeah. so we'll want to make a motion to combine them to 12 and 13. Uh, motion to combine 12 and 13 so that we can discuss in totality. She did Oh, she did. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, 12 and 13 are together. Stacey, you want to? I just mentioned. Okay. Yeah, so um, as also part of the, the bid process, we bid the provision of the fire, uh, fire protection water storage tank. There, both phases of the project, both portions of the project, were both due this past Friday, and the provision of the fire tank was um, the low bid on that was the Belief Group for fifty-five thousand four hundred sixty-five dollars. Um, that was the low bid by approximately um, eight hundred dollars to the next low bidder, so it was pretty close. And then there was another, uh, there was a third bidder, Superior Products, which was um, ha uh, significantly higher than the other two. So. The town's recommending that the Blake Group be awarded the contract for provision of the underground water tank. So that being said, in totality, between the two portions of the project, um, it comes out to the total cost comes out to about $130,000 and change. Um, and we currently have budgeted as part of the fire protection uh, program $110,000 budget. So now I'll segue to Stacy. So, Stacey, is the is the the running balance enough to to cover that overage? It is. So, next season we'll just need to make an adjustment in Correct. our CIP budgeting. Yes. Okay. Uh, Tom, we probably should acknowledge that the um, Madison Land Conservation Trust, I believe, has granted an easement for the placement of this water tank on their property. Absolutely. <coughs> okay. Right, so can I have a motion now to uh, approve both 12 and 13? Make a motion. Okay. Second. I can have further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Number 14, discussion take action to approve the submission of the funding application for the Hartwood Drive <coughs> Bridge Project and for the first selector to sign the same. So moved. Uh, second. There we go. Sorry. Anybody? Rob, was, you talk about this one? Sure. Okay. Um, so, re so at a board of selectmen meeting in November, um, I had spoken about um, a DOT inspection report that we had received as part of their bi uh, biannual 
um, inspection reports of all the town bridges over a 20 foot span. And this one was rated as poor, which I, um, I believe Alan asked some clarification on the condition. Poor is uh, basically based on the National Inventory Index is uh, number four. So poor is not in any way critical. There's, there's nothing and there's no imminent failure with the bridge, just to, to clarify that from the start. This is the poor rating is just DOT's recommendation that we begin the process of replacing or rehabilitating the bridge. So um, based on DOT's recommendation, we have reached out to a consultant to do uh, a study on the, on the bridge and to look at, um, to basically concur with DOT's inspection and to concur that the, the bridge is in need of replacement and to put some preliminary plans and figures together. So with that report that they had submitted, I would like permission, the Department of Public Works would like permission to submit the preliminary application um, for under the Federal Local Bridge Program. Based on a conversation we had with DOT in the fall, the funding was available. Um, so we have the County Road Bridge that's under, uh, under the, the Federal Local Bridge Program in the process. And we would like to go ahead and get a second bridge in the pipeline, um, the Heatherwood Drive Bridge. And um, it's my understanding that the federal funding is there, which just to remind you is an 80-20% split between the, 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 the federal government that's administered through the state and the 20% on the, on the towns end. Remind me of county, was county also a four also, or was county a three rating? You know what, I'm not sure. It wasn't I, as bad as... It wasn't as bad, as right. I remember. So this one is more critical to get going, it sounds like. Critical yeah. may not be the right word. Yeah. It's okay. time. Important. It's, it's, it's coming up on the end of its useful life, and it's right. time for us to start planning for its replacement. What's the year of... Uh, uh, how many years has that bridge been there? Uh, the Heatherwood Drive? Yeah. Or, uh, so I know the, the county road was in 1940, and then, but I'm not sure... I'm not confirmed about the Heatherwood Drive. I know it would be probably like 75, 75, 76. I guess, I'm not sure when that subdivision was. No, 75, 76. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's confirmed. Okay. All right. Um, everybody, any further discussion? Well, I'm still in favor of moving ahead with this. I guess um, um, I would love to see an executive summary of whatever report we receive from the engineer. Sure. So I could, I could send out the executive summary for um, uh, that my loan and approve had done, and then also we'll submit the preliminary application, and then when we when we find out that the project is approved and we get a commitment to fund, that's when we could f um, speak about sort of what the town town's um, responsibility will be as far as the twenty percent that we will be paying. So I I would like to follow up this meeting after. We know the preliminary funding application is accepted. What's the timing of this? I mean, how, what's the lead time? It's generally a slow process. The county road, like, we're just entering the preliminary design phase of that, and that's been in the works for over a year now. So I, I would assume, based on the preliminary, at this preliminary application, uh, I think we could get, you could get a response in four to six weeks. So I think the next phase of this would be probably um, either March or April's meeting, and then that they would, after that phase, if it's accepted and we decide to go forward and insert this into our five-year capital plan, we, uh, there's a kickoff meeting with DOT, probably I'm guessing would be sometime in the summer. And then um, the timeline after that, it's, it's very tentative. Um, okay. So, so um, ideally we would drop this into, in, in, in July, we would drop this into year five of the CIP? This is next Fine. Fine. <laughs> fine. <laughs> Nothing to say right now. <laughs> I, do I just want to make one comment. We're lucky that we're doing this through the federal local bridge program because the state bridge program is being defunded. No. <laughs> so they, they're, they're not accepting any more projects. So, um, you know, that's the one thing that was concerning me as we went through this process. I'm glad we're doing that. Sure. Federal. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Great. Number 15, discuss incorporating the funding of $275,000 for the Hartford Drive Bridge Project into the five-year capital plan. Heatherwood. Heatherwood. Second. Perfect. Huh. Uh, want to discuss it? Uh, so ideally, we would drop this into year five. 
uh, in, in the next cycle? Are we going to be able to do that? Is that I, th I think we need to review the review the five-year plan and see where it's going to fit. So I'm not, I'm not sure. Maybe even just getting that process started, I would think, with the federal program takes a while, anyways, right? So it's not like it's going to be a year one, anyways, or year two. I, I don't, yeah, right, probably. I would think so. In a couple of years out, probably. Right. Mm. Okay. No action to take. It. We just wanted you to be aware that that was going to be coming up. <coughs> These grants come with any expiration date as to how quickly they have to be used. Not, not that I'm aware of. I just I know for the county road, it's been over a year now, and we haven't made an expenditure towards the project. So, uh, and I, I believe the construction was originally slated as the, as the county road bridge is concerned in 20, 2020. So we're still a few years out from that. So it's my understanding, I'm sort of new to the process, but I think this is, it's, uh, from preliminary funding application through construction, it's, it's a, it could be up to a five, six year process, so. Wow. Yeah. Speaking of which, I think um, we're gonna need to look at the funding for the county road bridge, because things came in differently than what we originally anticipated. Uh, so that funding <coughs> portion, we're splitting that. Killing it. Right. And we originally were told that it was a 50 50 split, and found out in terms of the grant are that it's based on your grant list, relative grant list. So we're more of an 80 20 of the 20% than 50 50. I see. Yeah. Okay. I, wonder, I wonder if just in the <laughs> yeah. 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 could we just put the county road on another agenda um, to talk about that sure. to get the total cost? Would that be all right? Sure. Well, when we do, no. when, when we have some numbers, yeah, when it's when it's back to us. Yeah. Okay. okay, number 16, review RFP for town strategic plan. So we have uh, <coughs> the RFP, I believe, uh, will go out after we approve this. Well, we don't really need to approve this. I think this is more of just a check in. Yeah, oh, that's right. Um, the, um, the initiative is to develop a, a long-range vision and, and strategy for the town, and this is really the first step of that. Um, but I think past practice has been that we don't approve our address right. particularly. This is a just a check-in to, to see that we're we're executing on. So, would it be reasonable that we take the document, you know, for the next 24 hours and provide feedback as appropriate? Who drafted it? So, did you? It was a team effort. Yeah. It was a team effort led by Stacy, which is to say that if you don't like it, it's me. Okay. Sounds good. Um, Bruce, I noticed there's some evaluation criteria in here, which look pretty good. Who's going to do the evaluating? Uh, the way I see this process working is, is it is a community process led by the board of selectmen, facilitated by an outside coach. So I like that. Okay. So beyond that, the, the hearings, the workshops, the all of that, I, I think are all to be determined. Okay, we set on the schedule. Probably. But but it's clearly one of our core responsibilities to the town, um, and uh, and so you know we're just executing on that. Thank you. Okay, okay. number seventeen. Discuss proposed town tracking ways, plan ordinance, and timeline. So, Tom, I would like to move the following um, resolution by the Board of Selectmen. No, that's, that's the, that's the, we're doing the timeline first. This is, a, this is to talk about the fracking waste ordinance. Isn't that the, isn't that? This is the resolution <coughs> that we, are, we want to put into place yeah. today. Uh, two, what is the timeline? There's two, there's two so items. There's two, two items of fracking. I don't think we have the words. Yeah, the first one. Alan, I saw. Fine. Okay, I see what you're saying. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 A couple of weeks ago, about yeah. putting together a timeline. Um, okay. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
through action of the Board of Selectmen, not through a uh, town meeting, correct? Correct. So in order to enact a new ordinance, it has to go to an evening public hearing, and then the board has to approve the ordinance after the conclusion of that um, public hearing. So you would have to do it. Normally what we do is we have these evening public hearings for an ordinance right before your normal uh, regular evening meeting of the Board of Selectmen. So, that would put us at the March 26th meeting of having the public hearing, and if you felt comfortable approving the ordinance that evening, approving it that evening as well. So you would approve um, calling the public hearing at your March 12th meeting. You would have the public hearing on the March 26th meeting, and then you would go to your regular board of selected meeting where you could approve the ordinance being um, established. Lauren, where in the process is the draft of the resolution right now? So the resolution is entirely separate from the ordinance. The resolution that you're approving tonight is number 18, and that's not the ordinance itself. The ordinance has more, um, it has a, has a water overview. The resolution would have to be as good as it before. Yeah. Okay, so then the next step is really to... So the uh, ordinance right now is at the attorney for attorney review. Uh, he'll come back to us and let us know whether or not there's anything he thinks needs to be changed based on his legal opinion. Then you guys would bring the ordinance for a discussion and call the public hearing. So we could actually have on the agenda for discussion the draft agenda in our next yeah, so February in your next, meeting. In your February 26th so we, meeting. So we, 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 we would see ordinance. it to discuss it. Yeah, that's a great idea. Um, and then that would give us the time between that meeting and um, the next meeting. The next meeting to make any changes that we thought exactly. that we needed to and make. To, yeah. And then to call the public hearing and then to eventually approve it. Seems reasonable. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So if everyone's okay with that timeline, then we'll we'll get that on the next agenda. Okay. Thank you, Lauren. That's yeah. that's good. Number eighteen, discuss and take action to approve a resolution banning the use of fracking related waste for any town project. Okay. Is it okay? So moved. Okay. That's not. So, so moved. <laughs> That's first. <pretty simple. laughs> you got a second at first. You can't discuss it yet. Well, I'm going to read it. No, he's going to read the resolution. I'm going to read the resolution. No. You can't. You can't. Okay. Can't. All right. <laughs> All right. got to read that one. All right. Yeah. Um, a resolution banning the use of fracking related waste for any town project. In order to ensure the protection of the health, property, safety, and welfare of the residents of the town of Madison. Be it resolved that the Board of Selectmen hereby mandates that all bids and contracts related to the retention of services to construct or maintain any town owned and or maintained road or real property shall include a provision stating that no materials containing natural gas or oil waste shall be utilized in providing such a service. All bids and contracts related to the purchase or acquisition of materials to be used to construct or maintain any town owned and or maintained road or real property shall include a provision stating that no materials containing natural gas or oil waste shall be provided to the town of Madison. The following statement, which shall be a sworn statement under penalty of perjury, shall be included in all bids related to the purchase or acquisition of materials to be used to construct or maintain any town owned and or maintained road or real property and all bids related to the retention of services to construct or maintain any town owned and or maintained road or real property. We, the undersigned, hereby submit a bid for materials, equipment, and or labor for the town of Madison. The bid is for bid documents titled X. We hereby certify under penalty of perjury that no natural gas waste or oil waste will be used by the undersigned bidder or any contractor, subcontractor, agent or vendor agent in connection with the bid, nor will the undersigned bidder or any subcontractor agent or vendor agent thereof apply any natural gas waste <coughs> or oil waste to any town road or real property as a result of the submittal of this bid if selected. Dated this 12th day of February 2018. So moved. Second. Second. Bruce, where'd that language come from? I created it all entirely myself. Wow. No. Um, no. <laughs> this is this was shamelessly plagiarized from the draft ordinance. Um, so uh, we've we've picked up 
um, that part that uh, we felt we could act on really quickly that um, was going to be um, very non-controversial um, and just we're using this as a, as a vehicle to, to get this process going sooner rather than later. And I'm assuming Town Council has reviewed and looked at this as well. Yeah, Town Council he reviewed it. made a couple yeah. changes to it based on the language that he's I think it sounds great. Yeah, yeah I, I wonder if any of our um, experts uh, have any commentary on this. Uh, I guess my question to the Board of Selectmen is, uh, why did you feel the necessity to narrow it so much when, um, as I mentioned in the public comments, um, the, the uh, draft resolution that you were presented, I believe in January, has been passed by 33 towns and vetted thoroughly and I don't understand the benefit to the residents to narrow it. We haven't narrowed it at all. This is verbatim lifted out of the draft ordinance. It's lifted out of but it doesn't include all of it. So the draft ordinance will be come, in, in some version will become the ordinance. That was the timeline we just discussed. Right. So we will the, the draft ordinance is under review by town council. We will review it as a board in our next board meeting. It will then be noticed for a public hearing, March 12th, and then subsequent, immediately following that public hearing, presumably, we will vote to enact the ordinance, the full ordinance. So we're just doing it in two steps. That's all. Okay. So I this is going on all the bids. So this is this is this is an additional step. So we're actually doing double. before the our ordinance goes into place. Okay. I guess my only concern then is though that we'll we'll miss the second step. And I don't know the reason why drag it out. Why not present the entire resolution to the legal that. council and just do it in one step? Because you know already Guilford has set their timeline and they're you know, putting on their agenda at that town meeting. Clinton is putting this forward because they have a huge industrial waste site that is uh, proposed, and you know they realize how important it is. So I don't know why we would be pulling the brakes and saying two step. So we expect to have an ordinance in March. Are you worried that we've delayed this process? I don't um, know. What I'm saying is the ordinance that I think I'm hearing that will be ready in March is limited in scope. No. no. It, will no. Be, it will be verbatim. This is a totally different document. Oh, These okay. are two completely separate things that right? <coughs> we're passing. So this doesn't require a public hearing that we're oh, doing right okay. now. Right, so the this other is, the ordinance this requires a public hearing. Public hearing. You know, this is not appropriate for a meeting anyway. Which you, we're not supposed to be discussing with, with the fair enough. Okay, audience. thank you for the, your time. Thank you for clarifying. I can for clarify me. after the meeting. Yeah. Yes. If you'd like. Okay, so we have a motion and a second. Yep. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay, Aye. Number 19, Aye. discuss and take action to approve line item transfers totaling $2,300. So moved. Thank you. Second. There we go. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 Number 20, discuss and take action to accept the resignation of Mike Ciotti from the Beach and Recreation Commission. So moved. With um, much second. thanks. Second. second. I second with <laughs> yeah. much thanks. Yeah, Mike's, uh, Mike's done a lot for this community, so I, I, I second his second. <clears throat> All in favor? Aye. Aye. Um, discuss and take action to approve the resignation of Allison Keating from the Board of Education. So moved. Again, second, second with uh, uh, <coughs> gratitude. And Allison, um, again, Allison has done a ton for this community relative to her work on the Board of Ed as Vice Chair with Jean, and um, she should be commended for her exceptional work. I, I, um, I, I'd like to add to that. I had the, um, the pleasure of serving um, alongside Allison on the Board of Ed um, and sitting next to uh, her on the Board of Ed and I can tell you that um, you know she was she was a valuable addition and uh, I'm sure the Board of Ed will endure but um, boy she'll be missed. Indeed. Okay. Uh, all in favor? Aye. 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 We're 22 to discuss and take action to approve the following reappointments from the Democrat Town Committee. Christine Bouchard, Conservation Commission, Mary Molitor, Veterans Joint Advisory Committee. So moved. Second. All terms to expire January 1st, 2022. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay, we have several appointments. We may have um, to split a couple out because I'm going to have to Why don't we just call them individually? Yeah, right? perfect. Yep. Okay, the first one is Rob Card to Beach and Rec for a term to expire January 1st, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Bid Stusick to the Beach and Recreation Commission for a term to expire January 1st, 2019. So moved. Second. 
All in favor? Aye. 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 to the Senior Commission for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 William Pickett to the Zoning Board of Appeals, alternate for a term to expire November 1st, 2021. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We're going to remove the next. Um, yeah, so do you want me to just say anything about that? Or we just no. Okay, so we're just going to remove Megan's assessment. Yeah. Uh, and second, the next one as well, Tom. So Giselle McDowell, we're going to remove that one as well. Okay. Um, so the next one is Shana. 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 Shona. Shona. Yeah. A to the planning and zoning alternate for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Paul Kessinger to the employment employee retirement board, fireman's benefit committee, and police retirement board for terms to expire on January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Pam Green to the Beach and Rec Commission for a term to expire January 1st, 2019. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Fran Brady to the Conservation Commission for a term to expire on January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Last but not least, Tom Dolan to the Flood and Erosion Control Board for a term to expire on January 1st, 2020. So moved. Second. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So Tom, I'd, I'd like to ask that we open the agenda for um, uh, one additional item relative to uh, the Planning and Zoning Commission appointment. So we make a motion to open the agenda. Oh, open the agenda, yet. Yeah. Okay. So uh, second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. So I'd like to, I don't know how I do this. So I'd like to make a motion um, to um, to, um, move, to fill to fill Elliot Hitchcock uh, to the vacancy left by Fran Larson. He's currently an alternate on planning and zoning. So you're going to discuss and take action to approve appointing Elliot Hitchcock to the Planning and Zoning Commission for a term to expire January 1st, 2022. So moved. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. All right. And then we're also going to move to um, fill Shona Hay to fill the vacancy. You already did. We already did, so we're good. Okay. Yeah. So we're good. Okay. Yep. Thanks. Okay. okay. Number 24, tax payments and refunds in the amount of $8,326. Uh, so moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 And back to citizens' comments. Thank you. Young none. I'll move on to liaison reports. As a yeah, comment. Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to say, I understood <coughs> when you got into the um, logistics of passing the resolution for um, the construction, that that was separate and that was something that you could do without right. the town's approval. Exactly. So it, that you just clarified it. So I, I just All wanted important. to say, you know, yeah, you can do that. <laughs> but we're alert. We're doubling down. <laughs> yeah. We're doubling down. Thank you. Uh -huh. Okay. Liaison reports, select and comments. Anybody? Chief, do you want to go? Sure. Okay. So let's see, the planning and zoning, last planning and zoning commission meeting, which was a planning meeting, I think the key to that was the presentation. Um, uh, Dave Anderson did a, a great presentation um, for the uh, Academy Street School. Mm -hmm. And um, I think as far as the members of the commission, if they looked on it favorably, there were some very good questions. Um, I, I encourage them to attend the meetings that we're having tonight and tomorrow. Right. Um, but there is no, we're not going to issues. I don't know if Dave wants to add anything to that. Yeah, they're going to talk about it again on Thursday night. They had some good discussion. They wanted to take an opportunity to review the proposals in a little bit further detail and they'll probably um, vote to give you a recommendation you know, for your public hearing. Um, but they'll vote on Thursday night to do that. So they'll have time to discussion about it. Okay. Well, I have no updates. Okay. I do want to um, just say, um, since Dave, you're in the room, um, EDC met recently and received a presentation from I don't remember the name of the organization, but it was in conjunction with Scrog, right? Yeah, it was from uh, Rex Development, so they're Rex, Rex Development, slash right? EDC so this is a periodic economic uh, drivers uh, check-in, so they collect data and then report it back to the member towns, which is 
Milford to Meriden to Madison? Correct. That's that swatch of, of land, and uh, I thought it was very insightful. I, I know you were going to send me a copy, but would you go ahead and... and no, I have not gotten a copy yet. As as but when you get the presentation, would you just forward it to the entire board? Absolutely. I appreciate that. It, it was interesting, um, and uh, I'm really going to be interested to see how they execute on reaching out to the school districts, or at least our district anyways, um, with, with some of their findings. Right. I agree. I guess the only comment I have, Tom, is um, you know, the MDTC obviously met um, and interviewed quite a few candidates for the Board of Ed, and um, you know, we, were, we were unfortunately, with, with Megan stepping down, that was going to be our selection today, but the Coast Guard obviously provided a little bit of a snag. Um, so we have nominated a new candidate and we'll be working through the appropriate channels uh, with the Board of Ed and with the Board of Selectmen to get that on a special agenda um, in the upcoming time frame here. So we're, we're very excited about our, our candidate and uh, I think he'll do great. Um, the other just last comment, we sort of were talking a little bit about it, but I guess I would just more like to formalize it is, um, Bruce and I have talked about this at length, but just the notion of how we operate as a board and some operating guidelines and I think you know, we had a couple of examples of that tonight, but I think, you know, I, I hearken back to, I think, some of the things that the Board of Ed has been doing. Um, I'm not going to go along, I promise. I no, no, it's, it's, it's still morning where I am. <laughs> I don't know where you are. Um, um, <laughs> the, uh, the notion of um, discussing an item first before we discuss and take action. So I think, you know, wherein, you know, we're looking at an RFP or we're looking at a document that we might need to sign or approve or something, that we have that document in advance so that we can look at it, um, talk to staff as appropriate. If we're getting it in a packet on Friday late, um, we don't have that opportunity. So I guess I would just ask that we consider that um, you know, from, from an operating guy on the same way. So um, I to pick up on that thought. Um, the idea is that we have an opportunity to discuss an issue that might have some weight to it, um, and then we built in the, uh, the stop of waiting until the next meeting yeah. to to take action on it. Which um, is like we're doing with the fracking, which um, is what we just talked about, which I really like. So. I think, um, you know, short, I, I think I'd like to treat this as maybe a, a, a board norm or, or, or practice rather than a formal policy right totally now. Break, yes. um, and I would rely on Tom and, and Lauren um, to use your judgment to say this, this is one that the, the board is going to want to maybe mow on a little bit. Um, so and it's not to suggest too that things won't come up. So we understand that too. So it's not a right. And that's I want to make sure yeah, that we don't we don't tie our hands behind yeah, our back yeah, with yeah. this. Absolutely. Um, but uh, thank you. That's it great, seems yeah. like it seems like there's 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 room in the calendar with with meetings twice a month that we won't delay the wheels of government too badly <laughs> if we if we do it this way. Okay. Um, so the only comment I have is um, that we are. Tonight we have uh, right. two presentations at Folsom about Academy School. Tomorrow night we have two more. These are two different, they're all, there's four different proposals we're doing on two different nights so that we have plenty of time for discussion. <coughs> the format, excuse me, is um, half hour presentation, half hour questions for each one. And I'm sure we'll be able to stay later afterwards if anybody wants to talk to any of the proposers <coughs> specifically. Um, Dave Anderson, our town planner, has um, arranged for, as you heard, planning and zoning to take a look at this uh, and maybe weigh in. He's also asking the Historic District Commission and yes. Economic Development Commission to, uh, to do the same. So I think, you know, we're going to be hearing from all the, the boards that will review, all the boards that uh, have a stake in, in our plan of conservation and development, um, to get them to weigh in on, on, you know, how appropriate any of these plans might be. So I think um, we're duly vetting the whole uh, choice uh, as well as we can. Um, and I'm sure this is going to get restated at some point from the town, but maybe Tommy, you could clarify. As we narrow the focus down onto a preferred plan, that doesn't mean we have to take it as presented, but we're going to have the opportunity to go back to them and say, we like you the best, but we want you to maybe nudge it a little bit in this direction or that direction. We're going to have that opportunity, right? Yes. Okay. I, I think I think the plans that people are proposing are what are the beginning of what the proposal will be. So these are not take it or leave it, right. you know, right. if you don't I, like I, this. There's, there's room right. for negotiation right. Um, right. 
with, with any of them. You know, and I think an important point that, you know, I think for all of us, too, that, that at least I've been asked, and I, I've seen some questions about it in the newspapers, et cetera, is we're not, as the Board of Selectmen, endorsing any of these four. The, you know, it's for the public to vet and to consider. And, and we're, <laughs> well, eventually you know, we're Eventually we will, but we have we have not yet. We're, well, we're yeah, still reviewing them you know, just like everybody else. Absolutely. But, yep. Okay. With that, motion to adjourn. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thanks, everybody.